that gets me motivated. That gets me motivated. Hello, hello, hello. How's it going, everybody? <clears throat> Welcome to the Max Options Trading Class on creating watch lists and setting alerts. All right. Make sure you guys are following our social media platforms before we begin, or just come and join our Discord. Seven day free trial. I mean, why not? It's 100% free for seven days. We're on Facebook. Check us out, Max Options Trading. If you're not following me on Twitter at Max Options Trade, I post a lot of my trade ideas and concepts there, and I love having a little bit of fun. If you follow us on Instagram, Max Options Trading, the big account, and give us a tag anytime you're taking this course and the stories, and we'll give you a shout out right back. Um, thank you for your support. You can follow me on Max Options Trading uh, on TikTok with two G's because some bastard poached my name, but I'm pretty funny. I think you'll have a good time there. On Reddit, we post some advanced discussions uh, sometimes. We like to get into a good debate with some of the Reddit users. And then, as always, don't forget to follow us on YouTube, like, and subscribe this video. If you guys love these classes I'm putting out, please just subscribe, and I'll keep putting this shit out. I promise you. Before we be – look at that fancy shit. Did you see that transition? Wow. <clears throat> let me get some bubble water before we begin. Hold on. Let me get a sip of that bubble water. Creating watch lists and setting alerts. So what the hell is a watch list? Well, a watch list is a list of securities being monitored for potential trading or investing opportunities. All right, so here's a little screenshot of one of my watch lists on a trading view. So you can see some of the stocks that I have. I got different, different sets of watch lists, but this is a watch list right here. It's just a giant list of underlying assets or securities that you are interested in, all right? Understanding a watch list. So as an investor or trader, um, you may create a watch list for several or dozens, hundreds of trading instruments to make informed and opportune investment decisions. That's what it's for. All right. It's for you to make the best investment decision possible. A watch list can help you or an investor track companies and stay abreast or financials. Um, for news that can impact these instruments. Uh, typically, when an investor monitors the list, they wait for certain criteria to be met, such as trading criteria over a certain volume breaking out over a 52-week range or EMAs moving above the 200-day. Um, there's different criteria that you can set for your watch list, and that's the beauty of it. As I always say, no two traders are the same. So you got to really do what works best for you. This is just a piece of the puzzle, um, but it's a fantastic piece. It's almost a must that you have your own watch list, your set of stocks that you follow consistently. When the hell would I use a watch list? Well, you would use a watch list, uh, for example, if you're interested in purchasing stocks with particular sectors. Um, if that sector is overvalued, it may offer a few stocks that are attractively priced. Um, an investor could, could get a list of all the stocks in that sector and you could track the different measurements. Um, you could track the fundamentals of those companies like PE ratio, price to sales, price to book. Uh, PE ratio means price to earnings. Um, these are some fundamental uh, analysis that you could do on companies, which is huge when it comes to long-term investing. A company on the list met uh, specific valuation criteria, such as these, like a PE less than 15, you could then know that this stock was a possible candidate for possible investment. Remember, the PE ratio, this is just an example. You could set that shit for whatever you want. RSI under 20 is now met my criteria. Uh, it's 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 on the 200 day EMA on the daily chart just met my criteria so you can really set it and customize it to whatever you want to make it yours. All right. Many invested oriented websites allow visitors to create watch lists on lines. Um, that's where you should always do it. You could also use technicals for watch lists such as key support resistance EMAs or overbought oversold levels if you're a technical analysis trader like myself. So let's head on over to our charting software. Um, as always, I'm going to use TradingView. I'm a TradingView premium member. I suggest you guys, if you haven't used TradingView, definitely get uh, get a TradingView account. If not, you have your own charting software. Totally fine. Um, so you could look right here on the right. Let me grow this out. So this is my watch list. So this is just a list of the stocks that I know and love that I trade consistently. All right. So Apple, AMD, Amazon, Baba. Boeing, Facebook, Fastly, look at that bad boy got crushed today, huh? 
So this is just my watch list here. All right. So to create a watch list on the top right of trading view, you'd simply click on the plus button and you can add any symbol you want. You can see the hot stuff right now, Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Bitcoin. So all of these. So let's find an underlying asset that you're interested in. One that I've been hearing a lot recently is called skills. I've never even heard of it. You find the one that's in the New York Stock Exchange and you hit the plus sign. So now I've just simply added that to my watch list. So now I can come here, find skills, and I can pull up the charts right here and check out the technical analysis. I can do my own TA. I can start charting out support and resistance levels with whatever data that I have here. All right. So you can see that it's almost all the way back down towards that IPO level here where it had topped out all the way at 46. So definitely some uh, some room for growth and some more room for downside here, but that's it, that's it uh, for skills. You can add it to your watch list just like this, simple as that. Um, you can add different colors to it. You can add different uh, sectors, symbols. You can move it to different uh, watch lists if you wanted. You could do that all up here. You can add different what you want different data, extended hours, aftermarket, you could add volume data, change in percentage, total change, the last price. So you can add all of this. I just like keeping these three up here. I like to keep it nice and clean. And then TradingView also does a great job down here, checking out the 52 week range, the intraday range, the volume, the average volume. A big thing with watch list that people use is volume. Volume is number one, I would say. And then you can check out ER reports. So this is just the basics right here. Everybody on their charting software, whether it's in your brokerage or it's its own independent trading software like TradingView, um, they're going to have this capability 100%. So let's take a look at, let's head on back to this. So this is how we play our watch list. So every morning, uh, Monday through Friday, if you're following us on social media, which you better be, you're taking my class on YouTube. You better be following me on social media. If you're not, it's okay. We release a watch list every morning, Monday through Friday for our followers, just to give out four easy plays that we did all the heavy lifting for you guys. All right. So if you're following our, one of our social medias, go ahead and go back and follow us now. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Monday through Friday, around 9 a.m., posted daily on all of, our, all of our social media platforms. I blast that shit out on everything because it's free plays, guys. Why not? I like helping. We should all make money together. Teamwork makes the fucking dream work. Um, if you're wondering how to exactly take this information provided and turn it into cold, hard cash, then look no further, all right? The entry prices listed on our watch list are listed as long or short. This is where you would enter a call or a put. Long means calls and short means puts. It's the same exact verbiage. It's just a different, I mean, it's the same exact thing. You would take the nearest expiration date and the strike price that's closest at the money or closest out of the money for that individual underlying asset on the watch list, okay? Regardless of the premium movements on these contracts, you would close the trades once the respective price targets are hit. These price targets I'm going to go over with you here soon are individual key levels, whether they be from pre-market data, whether they be from support or resistance, whether they be from some other shit. Well, I'm going to go over it with you. But once those price targets are hit, you got to close the trade. It doesn't matter if you only moved up 2% or you moved up 50%. All right. Hope is a drug. And if the gains aren't to your liking, that's too bad. The key levels have been hit. The premiums didn't move, whether it be because of the Greeks or implied volatility dropping. It doesn't matter what. It is time to exit the trade. I want to make that very clearly. So here's what our watch list looks like. Pre-market watch list at MOT. This was May 6th. So you can see here we had Goldman Sachs. Wells Fargo, Caterpillar, Royal Caribbean, all right? Very strong banks and reopening stocks here, so I'm sure there was some news. You could see on the bottom that I put a little cheat sheet, long equals calls, short equals puts. So if you look here, long or short, these are the prices in which you would enter that trade. Now, remember what I said, you take the nearest expiration date, so this is May 6th, you would take a May 7th, which is the closest Friday's expiration date. 
you would also take the closest strike price. Okay, so at 359 here going calls, we would most likely enter the 360 call or the 359 at. For the short price, you would hit 356. So we would enter 357 puts at the money or 356 puts. All right, you don't enter both of these. You just enter the one once the underlying asset hits this price. So if Wells Fargo crosses 4612, we would enter a $46 call. If it tanks at open and drops to 4560, we would open a $4550 put. Does that make sense? We always take the nearest expiration and the closest at the money strike price. This is because they are intended to be scalps and day trades, not swings. These are supposed to be five to 15 minute trades or anywhere from one to three hours, but you should never have the intention of swing trading these watch list plays. PT means price targets. You enter at the longer short and you would secure profits quickly, whether it be PT1 or PT2. But please remember, as I said, it doesn't matter if you're happy or not with your profits. If this only drops a dollar and your contracts are only up 5%, take your 5%, exit the trade. Anything over zero is a win in options trading. Remember that. These are very low risk trades. And the best thing about it is if you enter at 83.25 on Royal Caribbean here, and you notice it gets to 84, and then it starts reversing and drops back below 83.25, that's your stop loss for the trade. Go ahead and exit. We had a false breakout, and it's time to exit. So you enter on the price of long or short. You secure profits with either PT1 or 2. They are intended to be day trades. You take the nearest expiration and the closest strike price, guys. That's it. Plain and simple. We give out four of these Monday through Friday just for you guys to make some free and easy cash. So what stock should you add to your watch list? All right. We're going to start getting into how do you add stocks to a watch list? Well, first off, you should trade stocks that you know. All right. I started off my uh, stock trading career with socks that I knew. I only traded Walmart, Alibaba, AMD, and Apple. God, I played the shit out of those four stocks. But you know what that did? That gave me a six cents of support and resistance levels, how those stocks reacted to news. I was all over those underlying assets, and, and I profited big time on them. When I saw Walmart back then was at 118, I knew it was time to jump in calls. When I saw AMD bouncing off $40 back then, I knew it was time to jump in calls. When I saw Walmart break above 123, I'd watch for a pullback. You know, and when you once you get to know these stocks because you trade them so often and you and you enjoy them, then that you really, you really real, uh, recognize that your trading starts, it starts elevating. It really makes you a better trader. And you can also, when I say trade stocks, you know, like me, um, I have iPhone. I love Apple products. I love Apple. I trade the shit out of Apple. All right. Um, I, I don't shop at uh, Walmart. I, I don't trade at Walmart anymore. <laughs> you trade stocks that you know, you know, the girlfriend stocks, Target, Ulta Beauty, you, uh, Lululemon, you know, you, you trade what you know. Trade stocks that have higher volume, all right? That's the biggest thing when we're looking for intraday trading um, watch lists and anything. Into, you want ones that have crazy high volume. Uh, I believe the guy over at Warrior Trading, Ross, I mean, the, the dude's a living legend. He trades on the relative volume. So that is the one multiplier times the normal daily average. So when you're looking for volume, you could find ones that have double, triple, even quadruple up to a hundred times the normal daily average. That means there's a massive pool of liquidity there. And that's what traders are looking for. And they're all charting out the same exact SNR levels. So that's how you can, you can jump on the piggyback of the big money and ride it to success. It's, it's a highly proven um, trading strategy. You could probably get 60, 70% wins every time trading stocks that have the highest volume, charting out a little support and resistance and jumping in with the big guys. You should track ETFs for sector conditions, okay? So you're gonna follow the ETFs, um, track 
not trade, you're gonna track the ETFs for sector conditions. So when you put these ETFs on your watch list, um, let me give you an example real quick. You can check out, uh, let's look at SPY ETF. This is the S&P 500, you can see a little technical analysis here. Then we have the QQQ ETF, which is uh, the NASDAQ's ETF. Um, you have other ones like UVXY in the fix, which is the fear rating, they call it. But basically, if you come to your trading view or you look up XL, XL, you're going to start seeing all the ETFs pop up. So you have XLE, which is energy. You have XLF, which is finance. You have XLN, or excuse me, M, which is market cap. Uh, XLI which is your industrial, you have all of them. So you want to look at those. Then you have your NASDAQ, which is NAS 100, QQQ. You can look up SPY, the SP 500. You can look up the IWM, which is the Russell 2000. You can look up the Dow, of course, Dow Inc. And then you have futures. So then you can look all of, all of these up on your futures. And if you're a real bull, you can look up Kathy over at ARC and then you can see some of these ETFs. Innovation, this is the big one, the innovation ETF. You can look up these ETFs. See, what you could do is you come up to the watch list here, create a new watch list and ETFs, vectors, You'd save this watch list over here, and then you come here, and then you can see here, look at this. You can go straight to index, and you can look up some of the index funds. Look, you got the VIX right here, and you can look up some of these. So I'm going to go to all, and I'm going to add, you know, SPY. We're going to add QQQ. We're going to add Dow. Definitely gonna add uh, the VIX. I also like to add XLE, XLF, XLI, Kathy, we're gonna get ARC Innovation. So now you can see right here, just from those basic ETFs I have, I can look at the sectors. I can see her growth innovation stocks got killed today. Industrials did pretty good. Finance killed it today. You know, XLE Energy did okay. VIX volatility had dropped. The Dow was up big time today. It looks like it had just recently broke out again to all-time highs. Tech did pretty well. And the S&P finished up $3 pretty well. So you could see how these give you a generalized sector uh, identity that you could use for your watch list to understand the conditions of the market, whether it be during pre or after hours. You wanna track all of these um, and get your overall market conditions. That's what they're used for. Track those, get your overall market conditions, track those and get your sector conditions. Very important. Let's talk about setting up a pre-market watch list. So if you're setting up a pre-market watch list, what you wanna look for is volume, volume, volume. I've said it twice, three, four times. I can't push it enough. You want good volume when you're talking about pre-market. You want a little volatility, all right? You Volatility doesn't tell you if a stock's going up or down. It simply tells you that it's going to move, that it's volatile, there's, there's good volume, there's a lot of liquidity coming in. It doesn't tell you if it's going up or down, but it tells you it's gonna make a significant move, all right? You wanna check SNR levels, like always. SNR is the key technical ingredient for trading. You want to check SNR levels. You want to check pre-market levels, whether it gapped up, gapped down, which is going to bring us to our last one, gaps. Uh, but you want to check those pre-market levels to see what kind of pre-market highs and lows we had. Because the bigger spread you have, the bigger spread you got uh, price movement when market opens to make a decision. Let me sip it as water. All right, you could use screeners to help your decision-making process. So stock screening is the process of searching for companies that meet certain financial criteria. 
By answering a series of questions and entering your search criteria, screeners give you a list of stocks that meet your requirements. Some of the best free screeners on the web include those offered by Yahoo, StockFetch, Chartmail, Zaxx is a good one, um, Google Finance, Finviz also has a great heat map. Finviz has one of the best screeners out there. TradingView, Thinkorswim, you guys go utilize any one of these, get yourself a screener, um, and then make sure you take the screener results as just the first step and then do your own research as well. Remember, it's just a piece of the puzzle. It's not the entire thing. Um, so that's that's the way you want to take a look. All right, so let's set up a couple together. Okay, so we're going to do a couple pre-market levels right now together, you and I, even though it's not pre-market. Let me go back to my watch list here. And we're going to look at some pre-market levels. So for the sake of this exercise, I'm going to go down to the five minute. All right. And if this was the pre-market, this is what I would be looking at right here. So if we just assume that this price action here is pre-market data, okay? If this is pre-market data, the first thing I want to look at is pre-market highs and pre-market lows, okay? So now that I charted out my pre-market highs and lows, you could use these for entry and exits. The next thing I would look for is the next level of support and resistance above those. So you would see two right here, and this is just the five M, but remember, these are day trades and scalps. And that's what we're looking for day trades and scalps. So we're not gonna go to the four hour or the one day, we're gonna stay close to five. You can confirm with the 15 minute chart. So if this was pre-market data, I would use these previous support resistance levels as my price targets. And I would use these pre-market uh, pre levels of high and low as my entries. So now we would say the ticker is SPY. The entry price for calls was 419.27. And for puts, we were down at 413.68. Little volatile on SPY, right? You can see the difference. See that big difference. Uh, well, let me um, fix this actually real quick. That was a little bit lower than intended. So that would be 21. So that would be my entry prices there. My profit taking zone for the calls would be the next level of support, which is at 419.87 and then 420.56. So that'd be 419, sorry, what was that? Uh, 87. And then the second one would be 420.56. For the short side, we look down here, we get 411.64. And then we would get the second price target of 410.62. That's it. So I have one of my pre-market watch lists done. All right. All I did was real quick, five minute chart, charted out my pre-market levels and then the closest levels of support resistance. Some things to keep mindful here is, um, first off, we're fucking pretending this is an actual pre-market data. This is uh, the end of SPY closing today on May 6th. But if we're pretending this little rectangle was pre-market data, the, the closest thing that you would look for is these EMAs. Remember that exponential moving averages act as a support resistance level in themselves. So if you started bouncing off these key levels here um, and it's the EMAs are holding this bullish posture, then you're probably not going to get down to the put side. All right. So you can just use a little bit of technicals here to realize call sides most likely going to happen, put sides not, but you still want to have those levels on the bottom just in case. So let's chart out another. Let's find another one. Um, Roku had a hell of a day uh, dropping downwards. So this one, so this is an interesting one. So if we're looking at Roku, right? So let's pretend we have pre-market levels again. Bang, this is pre-market data, okay? So you can see the pre-market highs, we have a gap. And the pre-market lows, we're down here. All right, so that's pretty, pretty widespread. 
on the five M. This is in, this is an intraday like whole day of trading. So that's why we have a wide spread. But if this was the pre-market, this is what you'd be looking at. So the top would be Roku. Uh, your entry price for calls would be 314. And your put side would be 27250. 27254. Okay, then we would look for the next level of SNR. So if we're looking for the next level of SNR, we're going to come back here a little bit. We're going to find our next level right about here. And then we're going to find another one right about there. Let's take a look at the short side, 272. Look at that, see that? I didn't even see this one, but you can see how my price action is just right by it. That's the power of support and resistance. So for the next one down, we're gonna take this gap right here, 266. And then we'll play the top bounce and go right here at about 255, just like that. So if I back all the way out to the daily, you'll see that these levels have significant zones on them. They were levels that hit. Another fun fact, which I'm gonna try here, is Fibonacci. Um, if you check the Fibonacci's on them, excuse me. Where the hell is the Fibonacci tool? What the fuck? All right, I can't find the Fibonacci tool, but, oh wait, maybe it's right here. Here we go. Sometimes these levels match up with Fibonacci levels as well. So you can see right here, I'm just a little bit off. Those Fibonacci levels you could use uh, as well for these. So if the current downtrend, you could see I'm just off just a couple bucks from these Fibonacci levels. You could also use those for pre-market uh, support resistance data if you wanted to. Then we come here. Roku. For calls, we got 207, 307, 318. And then 266 and 255. And that's it. That's how you would do it, all right? Simple as that. We're finding some pre-market data. You have all the keys right here. The only thing you need to do now is figure out how to set these alerts, all right? So if we were to look at something not as drastic, um, pre-market movements and, and after hours, they don't move as, as wild as those two examples. Um, remember, those are just examples of how you guys would do it. That's not real price uh, market data because pre-market and after hours is much, much smaller than that. So this spread might be 277 and 272, something like that. Um, so keep that in mind. Be very mindful of that. I just wanted to show you guys how to do it real quick. Just a uh, quick example. Let's get back to the show. Well, I work full time. So how the hell do I set up my alerts, Max? Well, here's some type of alerts you could set up. You could set up price alerts for scalping and day trades. Holy shit, like I just went over it uh, for, for quick price action. You could do percentage changes uh, for swing trading, overall underlying asset change. So like if you want to buy a stock and you're like, you know what, it's a little high, it needs about a 10% drop, you could set a 10% alert. And once it hits, you could say, now I'm ready to go ahead and buy some shares of this underlying asset. You could use the EMAs um, because these act as major support and resistance levels for price action. Um, I suggest the only one you set on that is the 200 EMA on the daily. It's, it's by far the, the most trusted and easiest bounce point. The 52-week high and low is another good one. This is important level to establish from previous price data is new highs or new lows. Stocks that have good fundamentals that are making new lows, 52-week lows, may be begging you to come in and buy them on up, right? Because it's only a matter of time before Kathy does. Uh, let's head over to our charting software. So let me show you guys real quick. 
every charting software is going to have something like uh, this little alert right here at the top. Okay, so you push the little alarm clock and it's going to have all these different things. So our first alert was for, let's go back to our price data, calls 419.21. So when I put crossing 419.21, I want to pop up, I want to be notified. Um, I don't need a webhook. I'm going to change the alert to buy calls 419.50 strike. 57 exp that's the nearest one and i'm going to create that alert boom all right now i'm going to come back down here i want to find out my put side was 41368 i'm going to type in 41368 crossing 41368 i'm going to name this one by puts 41350 puts of five seven exp and i'm going to create that now look what i have done i have these both of these my alerts set right here and you can go even as far as if you want to come back over here and find your next high which is going to be 41987 take profit you can set your alert just like that and conversely, you come up here, spy crossing. Let's find our put value was 411.64. We're going to come here to this and we're going to put in 411.64. Take profit. Create. Now look what we've done here. Look at this. We have our alerts to enter. We have our alerts to take profit. And we did all of that off of our pre-market watch list together. Pretty cool, right? So if you're busy and you don't want to look at this shit all day, you want to take some time away, you don't want to check your brokerage a thousand times anymore because your girlfriend's about to leave your fat ass, then you can set alerts just like this, right? You can set alerts and you can even share it. You can share these uh, alerts. You could tweak them now. It's fantastic, right? Um, you can publish these as ideas and you can give them the people um friends in your discord or wherever the fuck you're trading with uh maybe you're a loser and you don't have any friends so i'd start texting people or you come join mot i promise i'll help you make money that's it though that's how you set these alerts um some of the other alerts that we had spoke about you just come in here instead of crossing you have your moving up or down percentage or you come on down to the screener, which is the greatest way to locate some of these trades. All right, let's 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 reset the screener. I was using it. Volume. So we come all the way up. We want to see the biggest volume today. Sundial, LEDs, Palantir, Technologies. Look at this. 5% move. So you could use the volume down here on the screener. Or you can come here. Look at this. New 52-week high or low. And you could sit here and save and let's see so these are companies that made 52 week uh highs right here ally financial some good companies ait so this is how you you use the screener down here you come down here and you use the filter to find all the examples that you like best um this is a great way to trade you come down here you set up the screener because it's fucking impossible for you to look up a trillion different companies at once but if you say today i'm trading high volume companies only because i'm going to get in some scalps it's as simple as coming down here and getting the volume all right if you decide hey i'm going to see who took a beating today and I'm going to see if there are any good quality companies that I can jump in. Look at this. Fastly down 27% today on a bad earnings report. Strong sale, $32 million in volume. This might be a good one to trade. You come and you click on Fastly. Bring up the charts here. You can see I have a little previous technical analysis. And then guess what I'm going to do? Come on down to the 5M. And I'm going to start chart now my key support and resistance levels, just like we're supposed to do, right? And then if you wanted to, you could start setting up alerts, whether it be for a gap fill or because it's going to get rejected and break new lows. We look at previous support and resistance data and we come up with our levels. That's how it's done. That is how it's done. 
Conclusion. All right. So what is this all for? Well, the big thing is um, creating watch lists and setting alerts. They avoid missing a trade. Um, if you're busy, if you're out doing shit, actually living your life and you're not like me sitting in front of three computer screens all day, then this helps you avoid missing out on your trade. Successful traders know that less is more. So sometimes just relaxing, setting these alerts and playing the predetermined price data levels is the way to go. And I can tell you right now, I can hit one or two of these watch list trades every day for 10, 12% and I'm satisfied because the fucking win is a win, baby. And anytime you're securing profits, nobody's going to make fun of you. Trading alerts also help you track more overall setups. Practice how you play, right? This makes you a better trader. It's also very important for traders to stay up to date on news that may affect the stocks that you're trading. Like I knew Fastly had an ER. Peloton just tanked because they recalled all of their treadmills. All right, you got to stay on top of the news. You got to be on Twitter. Don't worry about staring at a screen all day, even though you fucking will, even though you'll check your brokerage 900 times. And then start getting to know your underlying assets you invest in for future trades. Like I said well, before, the more you know about these underlying assets, the key levels, how they react to news, um, the way the sector has been trading, it's going to make you a much, much better trader. And that is it. Thank you for listening to me ramble on again. Thank you guys so much for attending the Max Options Trading, creating watch lists and setting alerts class. Did you enjoy this motherfucking class like I did? Um, if you did, guys, just like, follow me on social media, subscribe to YouTube, leave me a Trustpilot Google or Facebook review. It means the world as a simple appreciation for me, my courses, and MOT. Thank you guys so much. Um, I really enjoy every minute of these classes, even though I'm talking to myself right now. Leave any comments if you guys have any comments, questions, concerns. Um, and I'd love to help you guys become successful traders. That's why I love putting this information out. You guys are the shit. Stay tuned for future classes. Thank you.